Good morning. We'll get started in just a few minutes. A few other folks joining us from the waiting room. Morning. We will get started in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, if you'd like to add your name and your business and where you're joining us from in the chat, we want this to be a casual opportunity for us to meet some other business owners um, across the Roanoke region and beyond. We have some folks joining us from all over the state this morning, so excited to have you all with us. All right, well, it is right at nine o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We are here today for our mental health workshop, Creating Balance and Self-Care in Our Personal and Professional Life. It is National Small Business Week and it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So thank you to each of you for being a small business owner, we see you, we're proud of you. My colleagues and I at the Small Business Development Center just love working with each of you. And if we haven't had a chance to build a relationship with you, we look forward to that opportunity um, at some point in the future. So a couple housekeeping things as we'll get started. Um, this virtual workshop is an hour. We are recording this and I will distribute it to you after the workshop is over. If you would like to have closed ca captioning on, that is available if, on your menu at the bottom of your screen. If you will click on that, that'll prompt me to turn that on for you. If you would please keep your microphone muted throughout the workshop, that way we have a clean recording. And if you'd like, as I mentioned, as you are joining us, if you want to introduce yourself and feel free to ask any questions and share resources and tips in the chat um, box, which is also available in your menu. It looks like a little caption bubble. All right. My name is Heather Fay, and I'm the Regional Program Director and Botetide Advisor for the Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center. We're a small and mighty team that serves businesses throughout our region. The Roanoke Regional SBDC offers confidential advising, education, workshops, events, and online resources to help your business thrive. As you can see here, this is our brand new website that just launched maybe a month or so ago, and we have all kinds of resources in our library and I'll drop a, a link to that that has worksheets and all kinds of resources for you for those midnight aha moments that you need some information and you're not sure where to go. We've got a great repository of information for you. And we also have an opportunity for you to get matched with an advisor. If you haven't reached out to us, that information is on our website. Um, you can also email us, you can message us through social channels and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We look forward to developing a relationship with you and helping you take your business to the next level. The Roanoke Regional SBDC is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration and is supported by America's SBDC, the Virginia SBDC, the Mason Enterprise Center at George Mason University. Pandemic-related capacity building grant funding is provided by Go Virginia, and other funding is provided by local administrations, economic development offices, and businesses that are small cha business champions in your corner. Thank you to our host, the Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce for pro providing space and support for our work. The Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center currently serves the Roanoke Valley, Franklin County, the Allegheny Highlands, and the Greater New River Valley. If you are joining us from outside this service area, we have offices all over the Commonwealth of Virginia. 
The Roanoke Regional SBDC is a part of the Virginia SBDC network, an organization comprised of 27 different small business centers across the state of Virginia. The Virginia SBDC is the most extensive business development program in the Commonwealth. And the triangles on the map that you see on your screen denote where the SBDCs are located across the state. All right, y'all, we are in for a treat today. I am so grateful to have my friend and colleague, Dr. Angie Anderson, join us today to be our guest speaker. Angie is a licensed professional counselor, collaborative divorce coach and child specialist, and a certified yoga instructor. Angie has provided mental health therapy, coaching, and yoga instruction to hundreds of clients. As a counselor for over 20 years in diverse settings, Angie has personally adopted an integrative approach while utilizing a variety of therapeutic interventions and tools to best meet the needs of her clients. Angie's intention is to bring the session to a theoretical recipe based on person-centered, existential, and cognitive behavioral, and behavioral ingredients. With an additional spiritual component, she hopes to empower clients with practicing with an integrative model. With a person-centered focus, the relationship is of the utmost importance, providing authenticity, respect, and acceptance. Through an essential lens, clients are supported to acknowledge potential for self-awareness and given freedom to live life in individual fate. At times, cognitive behavior interventions challenge personal belief systems to create awareness on the think-free-do cycle. Respecting the importance of unity of families and marriages, Angie has developed a five session program, respecting the importance, excuse me, making love last. Through her program, Angie is dedicated to assisting families and couples with enhanced healing communication and effective cognitive resolution while maintaining mutual respect. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Angie Anderson. We are just so excited to hear from you today when we, and May being Mental Health Awareness Month, I was like, I know who I want to reach out to this year to offer our program to our small business owners. But Angie, I am going to let turn the microphone over to you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and my music, and we will keep on rolling. I kind of like the music. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to come and talk about something I am extremely passionate about which is mental health. I think it's so important. Um, more and more every day, I believe so. Let me take a moment to share my screen. And we are going to get started. So I'm very um, informal presenter. So if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to, um, you know, unmute yourself and ask me. That's what I'm here for, because I want this to be very, um, inclusive and collective in our conversation about this, because while this is very individualized approach um, to taking care of ourselves, it is important to um, surround ourselves with people that can help us think outside the box and create a better way to care for ourselves, because sometimes we need to hear other people's um, insight. So, um, those are just some fun pictures of me around the community because while I'm also very passionate about mental health, I also am very passionate about yoga. So I do try to uh, present as many different types of avenues for counseling and yoga equally because they're both very important part of my self-care and do try to practice what I preach, that's for sure. So let's talk a little bit about how come my screen's not? Okay, there it goes. Okay, so this is something when I started putting this presentation together that kind of spoke to me. So I just want to take just a moment to read why important uh, self-care is very important for ourselves. So today, self-care, especially in the workplace, is a mandate, not a luxury. In order to be our best selves for our colleagues and peers, we must develop strategies for integrating self-care into our workplaces. And I would add our personal lives. All too often, we find ourselves sacrificing elements of personal care for what we believe to be the betterment of a work product, timeline, or other conceived objectives. However, the long-term implications of consistent deprioritization of self-care are stress 
anxiety and frustration. So I like what Miss Erica had to say here because I think that is so important. If we don't listen to our self care and the importance of it, we are going to experience way more stress, anxiety, frustration, and ultimately burn out. So it's important um, while we think about self care is to redefine what self care is really about. And so we do tend to often think it is about connection to ourselves. Um, special attention to a physical sense of well being. Yet within the workplace, self care extends to being attuned to how you can be most constructive, authentic, and an effective version of yourself. By reframing this concept of self care, we are better able to create goals and tactics which align with this new definition or this new reframe of what self care really is. And so that is what I mainly want to spend our time talking about. When I was in college many moons ago, because I'm getting old now, uh, I read this book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And if you have not heard about this book, I would highly encourage you to read it because it's a, it's a pretty um, awesome takeaway aha kind of book for myself. And I think that it's really designed for those that are moving into the more leadership business world. Um, but it is an overall self improvement book. It was re written by Stephen R. Covey. And so he, it's basically about his belief uh, the way that we see the world is entirely based on our own perception. So a lot of even Dr. Phil, the famous Dr. Phil talks about how um, there's really no reality. It's only perception and it's how we see things. So I think that that's a pretty powerful thing. I mean, there are some things on reality, but a lot of times our mindset and our core beliefs that we have, if we don't learn to challenge those, then we're going to constantly be stuck in old beliefs or patterns or um, especially limiting thought patterns that cause us to sabotage what we really want and our goals in life. So we have to pay attention to that. Um, so, so Kobe says, in order to change a given situation, we must change ourselves. And in order to change ourselves, we must be able to change our perceptions. So I really, I didn't really understand the power of that statement until I've had 20 plus years in the counseling field. And I can really see that in working with my clients um, about how a faulty perception of something can really challenge our entire core path in life. So again, I want to highly recommend this book. So in this book, there is one chapter that talks about, uh, we have four key areas in our life, four types of well-being. We have our physical well-being, we have our emotional, mental well-being, our social well-being, and our spiritual well-being. And so we're going to go through each of these four areas of well being for ourselves and try to start challenging our own perceptions and set um, baby steps, if need be, goals to help us um, bring a little bit more balance into our everyday life through purposeful, intentional practice of um, taking care of ourselves through these four areas, really showing up for ourselves. So what I want to invite you to do is take out a piece of paper and grab a handy dandy writing utensil, a pen, marker. I love markers because bringing color into our lives is very good for the endorphins in the brain. So try, don't hesitate to bring out color for this. And then when you have your paper, uh, draw a line down the middle, and then you're going to draw a line across so that you're creating four quadrants. And then we're going to spend time talking about each one. So you can go ahead and label the quadrants. The top left-hand corner will be physical, top right-hand, emotional, mental, people call it something different, um, social, and then spiritual. 
So this is an exercise that I do pretty much with every single one of my clients, probably all the way middle school and up. I will do it with some more advanced developmental elementary clients that I have, but for the most part, I think that this serves as an excellent foundation to anything that we can do to move forward in whatever it is that's, you know, holding us back. Um, because if we're not balanced, we are either consumed in one of these areas or we are neglecting or ignoring one of these areas. And so with that being said, when we ignore, neglect, or get consumed, we tend to get very out of balance. And that's when we're going to have higher levels of stress. We're going to have more depression, more anxiety, and so forth. So as you do this, uh, let's start talking about um, each quadrant specifically. So any questions so far? Everybody understand what we're doing? Okay, so I can't see you. So if you do need me, make sure you, um, you can either raise your hand down in the response. If you hover over in the bottom, you have a little response, you can raise hand or you can just unmute yourself and feel free to interrupt me. So physical well-being is really looking more at eat, sleep, and exercise habits. Um, so the goal to having more physical improvement is to exercise our body that will enhance our capacity to work, adapt, and enjoy. So to renew ourselves physically, we have to eat well, eat better, um, food is fuel for our body. So what we put in is what we're going to get back. And so you have to remember that, um, get sufficient rest and relaxation, um, exercise on a regular basis to build endurance, flexibility, and strength. And with exercise, you have to, um, listen to your body, you know, do what works for you. If you have mobility issues, try to do more of exercises that can be done right in a chair. Or, you know, if um, you have a lot of knee problems or back problems, consider doing some water type of exercises where you're taking the burden off of your physical body by, you know, putting the weight on it that takes the weight off of you, so forth. So work within your limits, um, set yourself realistic. Um, because focusing on the physical dimension will help us develop muscles of proactivity. We act based on the value of well-being instead of reacting to the forces that keep us from healthy sleep, eat, and exercise, like anxiety and worry and all that fun stuff. So as you're thinking about physical, I want you to take just a few moments to write down um, five new challenges. It may be things that you're already doing that you just want to be a little bit more mindful of or something that you know you need to do. So it can be things like, and when you're setting your goals, when you're writing your, because I, when I'm usually doing this one-on-one, -on -one, I can do better at telling them this. And so, um, what you, um, want to create is a positive movement approach to your goal setting. So you don't want to say, um, don't eat sugar. Instead of saying that, you want to put it like um, limit sugar, increase fruits and vegetables or something like that. Because if you focus on what you're not going to do, then it really sets a negative energy to, you know, your work of paying attention to creating intentional, purposeful balance in your life. So put it, try to put it like in a positive movement energy wise. And if you struggle with this, you're not the only one. So don't hesitate to unmute yourself and say, I want to put this, but I don't know how to say it. And I'll support you in writing that. So think about eating habits when you're putting your challenge. You can go ahead and start working as I'm talking. Um, think about eating habits. And then also think about 
um, sleep habits because sleep is really the way that we rest to prepare for the next day. So if you're not getting sufficient rest, you're not really going to set yourself up for success the next day. So focus on trying to be the best to your ability. I know life happens. I'm not unrealistic with this, but think about like creating a sleep schedule. Um, your body will learn to start to shut down Mine is I try to do 11 o'clock and then so you create a two hour window for you I start to try I try to go to bed at 11. I try not to go to bed any earlier than 10 and I also try not to go to bed any later than midnight now that is going to happen. I'm married to a musician so sometimes we're getting in late and that just happens so you're just going to have to you know do the best you can do with creating the schedule. But um, let's see. So then when you set your schedule, you also want to try to do a wake up schedule because the worst thing you can do is sleep in on the weekends. And make, that means get up at noon when you usually get up at seven o'clock in the morning because you kind of shock your body. You don't your body doesn't know what to expect. So, again, try to set a two hour window challenge for yourself like normally I get up around seven because I've got to get my daughters up um, and get them on the bus. And then um, we, I'm not a morning person. I've never been a morning person. I will probably never be a morning person. So it, this has been a little, it's, I can stay up. I'm a night owl. I'm getting better with that. The older I get, because now I'm like ready to go to bed at 11 and which is still late for a lot of people. But for me, that works for my schedule. So um, if you know that you normally get up at five o'clock, then I wouldn't tr sleep in much longer than seven o'clock. Um, on the weekends and then you know take a little power nap there's nothing wrong with that rest when you need to rest but just try to do the best to get on a sleep schedule you can be another thing I recommend to help with sleep especially if you have a wandering mind I um, in yoga we call it the monkey mind at night when you lay down and your thoughts go a little bit everywhere uh, one of the things you could try is to try to take magnesium a lot of people go to melatonin. I am not a fan of melatonin because melatonin should only use for short periods of time, um, very low dosage. And, I, and our bodies already make melatonin. So if you're taking melatonin on a, a more consistent, like regular high dosage, you're going to start to notice your dreams are going to become very vivid and they actually will disrupt your sleep. So be careful taking melatonin. Um, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it, especially in children, but that's unfortunately the pharmaceutical world is the first to go to mel prescribing the, uh, melatonin. And sometimes I think it's helpful, especially if they're doing a lot of blood work and they can see that levels are low and so forth. I'm, that's out of my forte, I don't know, but I just know that our bodies do not make magnesium. There's been a lot of research with magnesium that has shown um, that it's really good for anxiety, um, the monkey mind, restless leg syndrome and so forth. So you don't like to ingest pills where well, you can take an Epsom salt bath. There's this wonderful powder that I used to only be able to get at this Vitacost place but now you can get it like everywhere, Amazon. I think I even saw it in Walmart. It's called Calm, C-A-L-M. And it's a powder, a flavored powder that you can make in a cup of hot tea at night, or you can sip on it in water all day. And it just kind of really helps soothe the brain and also rest um, some fatigued muscles and things like that. So huge fan of magnesium. Um, but also on your extra, your physical includes some exercise. Again, work within your limits, do a video, um, go to the gym. If you have a gym membership, schedule gym time just like you do an office meeting. Um, that's why I teach classes because it makes me go. It's accountability check for myself. So um, do what you can do for that. Um, if you have like a 
Apple Watch or a Fitbit, you know, try to track your steps every day and challenge yourself that way, whatever works for you. So that is physical. So make sure you have at least five um, goals and challenges. Does anyone need any more time for physical? Don't hesitate. You can raise your hand if you don't want to unmute. Because we can certainly wait a few minutes. Okay. All right, so let's move over to the next top right hand quadrant that is your emotional well being. And this is looking more at your mind, your thought patterns and so forth. And so the goal to renew mental health is constantly expanding our mind. Don't ever settle um, for learning new things, considering alternative ideas having hard conversations um, because people think differently. So it's okay to have a conversation and not agree. I don't know what has happened in our society with the ability to agree to disagree. Uh, people are so set in their mindset on things that they will not continue to gather new information and you are setting yourself up for failure because you have rigid um, thinking. And so that does not allow for flexibility in your life. And so that is not positive energy. It is not a mindset of growth and it will not serve you well at all. Um, we may think we know it all, but we really don't. No one ever really does. Um, renewing yourself mentally, you can practice um, an attitude of gratitude journal. That is a one that comes from Oprah, and I love that. I'm sure she's not the one that created it, but every time I think of a gratitude journal, I think of Oprah. And so that is just at the end of the day, it's a great way to come together with your family unit or your friends and say, your partner, um, what is it that happened today that made me most thankful? And so you got to learn to think outside the box because it's easy to say, well, I'm thankful for friends. I'm thankful for family. Um, I'm thankful for, you know, that. But what happened for your day that particular day that really made your day special? Uh, maybe an interaction in a store. Somebody gave you a compliment or um, the sun was finally shining and um, one thing I'm greatly, gratefully thankful for is um, every year I, I planted hostas when I first moved into my house and the deer eat my hostas like crazy. Well, this year I decided it doesn't look very pretty, but it's working so far is I put these little metal stakes around my little flower bed and I have this fish wire with this little glittery ribbon on it because it scares them and they haven't touched my hostas. So for the first time, in the, let's see, 14 years I've lived here, I finally can see my hostas. They're not only just buds and then get eaten down. So I'm really tickled about that. So just tapping into what it is that really makes your day special. The attitude of gratitude is wonderful practice. Um, looking at or reading good literature or listening to podcasts or um limiting television watching only watching you know uplifting um shows like if you binge watch something but you know finding things that actually enrich your life and mind and i would say you know stay off of any negative social media like if you're following someone that just sucks the ever living life out of you. I call them emotional vampires. Stop following them. You don't have to defriend them. You just um, restrict them or you, uh, you know, don't follow them. And that way, if you want to check in with them, you can go and check in with them. You are totally 100% responsible for what you allow to come into your mind. So take responsible responsibility for that and put things in your life that provide enrichment for you, not sucking the life out of you. Nobody wants to um, listen to that at all for yourselves. And it's just, it's that, that constant 
um, criticism, that inner critic that goes on, that's what I mean, nobody wants to listen to that. So you, you just gotta set boundaries and limits with yourself. So what can you do to set boundaries and limits for yourself? Um, another good one to pay attention with emotional mental is things like um, brain exercises, like doing a daily Sudoku puzzle or doing, um, you know, like those word games, those word boggles or whatever they're called on your phone, crossword puzzles, anything like that, that makes you tap into, um, you know, just keeping the endorphins and your brain active. They've done a lot of research with that as well, too. So pay attention to that. Um, basically focusing on our mental health, our mental dimension, the mental well-being, emotional, helps us practice managing ourselves effectively to maximize the use of our time and resources. So we're really showing up for ourselves. Um, this one with my clients is spend a lot of time talking about coping mechanisms that we use. Um, unfortunately, that's one of the things that goes by the wayside the older we get. We learn coping skills in elementary school, and then when we get older, we lose a uh, mindset of that. So uh, take a moment to complete your five challenges on your emotional, mental well-being. Um, if anyone needs any more time, please let me know now. If not, we'll move to the next one. I'm talking through it to give you some, so some ideas, but don't hesitate to uh, say, I need more time. Okay, so let's go on to the social well-being. This is going to be in your lower left-hand quadrant. This is um, your fun side. This is really tapping into um, what people say your inner child. It does have to do with um, developing meaningful relationships, but it is, so it's setting boundaries, creating date night, um, finding um, family fun activity, but also connecting with friends, like is, but we, when we are parents and work, those two things consume us. So then we don't create friend time and you have to have some type of outlet, even if it's once a month, um, participate in a club, uh, do some volunteer work, look for your community to, um, Try to get involved in some projects that are happening. Um, I'm pretty involved with the bank of, um, it used to be the bank of Fincastle 5K, but now it's the first bank um, fall run. So if, I, and I'm not a runner, so I don't run. If, I, if I'm running, you better run too, because that means somebody's running after me or something. And I do not run. I, I can teach cycle and yoga and go hiking all day long, but to run, no. My knees hurt. I tried that couch to 5K thing, and that was the most miserable time of my life. So running is not for me, but I really support that event in the community. So I have gotten really involved in that, and, um, and I really enjoy that. So find something that you feel like you can contribute to. Look at opportunities to, like, participate in... Um, go out, I think it's out, go outside Roanoke or something like that. If you like to be outside, there's all kinds of meetup groups on um, Roanoke meetup. I think you can look at, uh, look it up online. And sometimes when I have clients that are struggling with, I just don't know how to find my people, then that I take them there because most people think that's a dating app, but it's really not. They've got things where if you like to eat out at restaurants, they've got uh, restaurant club meetings, they have book clubs, they have um, hiking clubs, skiing clubs, all kinds of things. And so a lot of those places in the community will go there to help recruit potential um, interested members. So check that out, get involved, um, you know, connect with family. Family's got to be first. Um, you know, make sure you create plenty of time to have date night uh, with your partner. Um, 
meet new people if, if that's hard for you. The other thing I would say is, um, you know, look at communication skills is in here. So sometimes I'll do some assertiveness training with some of my clients. And, and the biggest thing that I teach with assertiveness is say no when you want to say no. It is totally okay. You're not doing yourself any good to say yes and then be riddled with resentment because you agreed to do something you don't, you didn't want to do in the first place. Um, and if you have a hard time saying no, my uh, feedback that I give my clients when I'm teaching them that is one of the best ways to say no is that doesn't work for me. If you can teach yourself to, to say that, that doesn't work for me, or how can I support you in getting that done without me? That is the most graceful way you can empower someone else in getting something done that you know you don't want to do. So pay attention to that and see if you can learn to say no. Another thing that I say with no is no can be a complete sentence. Just no. You know, you don't have to be ugly. So that leads me back to the other thing I was going to say is about watching approach. Um, if you want to be approachable, you have, I mean, if you want to be approached, you have to be approachable. So for my 16 year old daughter, that is a complete mini me and we butt heads like crazy because she is just like me. I have to really watch my approach because if I want her to be respectful to me, I have to be respectful to her. I can say no as a parent, but I have to learn to say no and still empower her where I don't, you know, um, take away her opportunity to show up for herself. I've got to get out of my own way sometimes when it comes to parenting. So it's being mindful of that. And also your social well-being is, again, what can you do to have fun? What hobbies did you lose that you haven't been able to do in a long time that you that used to really bring you a lot of joy? Or what is something that you would want to learn that you can put your energy in to learn? I really want to know how to do this. So you do it so you can feel more empowered. So look at relationships and look at things to have fun. What can you do to laugh? Um, life is so serious. What can you do to laugh more? Um, so basically renewing our social and our emotional dimension, the two that we just did, that helps us practice healthy habits. And we can recognize that creating a win-win solution, it actually does exist. We start to seek to understand others and we find mutual beneficial third alternatives through synergy. And that is something that you can learn more about in the seven habits of highly effective people, that book I was talking about. Um, and we have more fun in life. And then that means at, in our lives at home and at work. All right, does anyone need any more time for social well-being? All right, so let's talk about the last quadrant. The last one, lower right-hand quadrant, is our spiritual well-being. And so this is not necessarily the same thing as religion. I'm not um, taking you to church here. I am asking you to tap into what brings you inner peace. And this is, can be, religion. It can be faith-based practices. So if that is important to you, that is where you want to spend time in prayer. You can spend time in meditation. You There's all kinds of meditation apps. Um, two of my favorite, uh, one used to be Calm, C-A-L-M, again, like the powder drink I was talking about earlier. But that one has started to go more um, where you got to pay for their services. And so I like the free ones, obviously, because I'm frugal like that. But you, there are some free ones. And I do like the aspect behind that app. The other favorite one that I use is Insight Timer. And that one can be 
guided meditations. It can be music based. It can be specifically targeted. Like if you're feeling particularly anxious one day, um, you've got a big presentation coming up and you want to have confidence in it. You've got a big um, um, licensure exam or certification exam and you want to feel empowered. You can tap into that. There's some really great ones to help you go to sleep. When I was having a hard time sleeping um, a few years ago, I started listening to them and I could never make it through to the end. Um, I would always fall asleep before the end. I love sound bowls. I'm a huge fan of sound bowls. They're just very soothing and relaxing to me. So I choose to listen to those, but you can pick and choose on that app, which one you do. Um, but certainly, you know, if the faith-based practices are important to you, that's a great way to renew yourself spiritually is to um, get back into church. I know that was one of the things that went by the wayside during the pandemic, um, but it is so important to connect with people. Um, we've been isolated far long enough. And so you can do it at your own safe pace, but I would highly encourage you to start um, connecting and being with people because I have certainly seen with the pandemic, the, um, the social like awareness has gone by the wayside, um, interactions, you know, loneliness, isolation, suicides on the rise, um, domestic violence, so many negative mental health impacts to the pandemic, I can not even get started on that because it is very sad to see what's happened with the whole situation. So please make sure you're taking care of yourself spiritually. Um, if you're not a church person, um, take your church out in the woods. If that forest bathing is a real thing. Um, being out on the water soothes my soul like crazy. I love taking my paddleboard out, going kayaking. Um, I do like the river, but I prefer to be like on still water because I just really like to float and paddle and play and not have to worry about what's coming around the bend and what are the rapids look like. That stresses me out when the rapids come. I can feel my anxiety coming up. So that is not peaceful for me. Um, so again, you totally got to listen to yourself and see where you're at with things. Um, you know, like listening to nature sounds. I always joke about this, but it is true. The older you get, the more you love to hear the birds. I love sitting out listening to the birds. But also listening to empowering things. Like if you don't feel comfortable going to church, then try an online service or listen to a podcast or a TED talk or something like that. That is about um, finding inner peace and connecting with yourself. So some of these do kind of go in and out of the quadrants. Um, so you might see that you want to put them under all of them, but I would encourage you to do five specific, very uh, distinct, different um, challenges for yourself because they do kind of blend. And the more you start being very intentional about your self-care and very purposeful, you will start to not need the 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 form we're filling out because you'll kind of start to know if you're um, not sleeping very well, I'm kind of stressed out, I'm very irritated, I'm anxious, I'm getting depressed. Come back to this and see where you are getting consumed or neglecting and then put your energy into creating that balance. So you're spending equal amounts of time on all four because it's very, very important. Um, the focusing on a spiritual dimension does help us practice those healthy habits. Um, we're going to continuously revise and commit ourselves to those values so we can begin with the end in mind. That's what the spiritual well-being is all about. So does anyone need any more time for spiritual? Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your experience. I've talked enough. Now it's your turn. So let me come back to if I can see some of you. All right. So who would like to talk a little bit about just a few minutes, a statement or two about what was your experience? What did you notice? How was this for you? 
to do that, making sure my dogs aren't going to go to town. They always do that. You don't want them to bark, but that's the luxury of working from home. So who wants to share? What did you, how, how was this for you? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? You going to leave it? I love it. And Angie, I'm going to stop recording that way. If folks do want to share that that's not recorded. Okay.